Good evening, it's Darcy and Brian. We are the Stay at Home Gamers, and tonight we are going to talk about coaching kids during gaming. Mm -hmm. Because we don't really let our kids win on purpose Enjoy. too often. Sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't let them win. We do what we call coaching instead and trying to help teach them how to game, teach them strategy and things like that. So mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that tonight. Why don't we let them win? Because then, well, it's partly because then it's not fun to play. Cause then, it's so boring to play. I mean, I don't mind losing, but... <laughs> and it depends on what you're playing. There's no challenge then at that point. It's almost harder to, to not win sometimes. It is hard to <laughs> lose on purpose sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, not that Candyland is a good example, because that's not the type of game that we typically play with the kids, but... Trying to lose Candyland on purpose is hard. Yeah, it's all it's a chance. It's There's hard no skill here. <laughs> because you're just randomly drawing the cards and stuff, and yeah, I mean there were there were, there have been times where we will do as well. We might, yeah, we might not do something that we know would be a huge advantage for our turn, but for the most part, we want them to learn how to play. Yeah. We want them to learn strategy. Yeah, because there's a challenge and it's fun to play for everybody. Right. And, and when they beat you, you feel proud. We Yes. Like, I <laughs> definitely had moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, they won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you beat me. Fair and yep. square. It's awesome. But also, I mean, there's, it's also a bit of trying to teach good sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. Because. That's why you, you lost, but you, you did well. You made good decisions. Right. Right. It's, a lot of it's based on chance, so. The road dice did well, well, so you lost, you know. So, it's, it, it does take a lot of talking them through it. When they're littler, it's not always the easiest, but we do like to modify the games based on their abilities. Mm -hmm. Our kids tend to be able to play games at a higher age range than what a lot of them recommend, just because they've played so many games. Yeah, they know the strategy. It, was, it wasn't always that way, mm -hmm. but they're at the point now where they can play up a bit. But we still sometimes have to modify things. Like the little guy, he is starting to read, but he can't read well enough to, you know, read all of his cards by himself. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to modify things to make sure that he's able to play. And then even with our daughter, there's sometimes where we might modify things a little bit. But then as they start to master that, then we, yeah. then we up it. <laughs> then we take it to the next step. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard because you feel like, oh my gosh, is this bad to like have them? Yeah, I mean, you don't, don't want to stick in their face like lost. <laughs> right. I mean, but. that's part of showing how to be a good sport. Is sometimes winning. I apologize for winning. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna win, but you did good. <laughs> right, trying to give them a little bit of a heads up. Mm -hmm. But I mean, showing them how to win with grace is such an important thing. Yeah. And just in life in general, not just gaming, it's, yeah. it's important to understand. You know, be a star winner. As they say. Or a sore loser, mm -hmm. either. So we do modify rules a bit sometimes with them. And sometimes we might shorten... Like, we might come up with a way to shorten a game if it's a longer game. Because if it's too long, the problem might not be the game or even the strategy. It's, it's just boring. their attention span. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we start to lose them, and then yeah. they can get... And then they just drop out. Kind of... Can you think of any examples of stuff that we modify? Well... One example that I can think of right now is Hive Mind. We modify it for him because he can't write out all the answers. True. So we write all of our answers, and then I have him whisper his answers in my ear so that I can write them down and for him. Can, you know, copy him. Yeah. I mean, it's not really modifying the rules exactly. It's just no. trying to figure out a way to include him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a little bit outside the, the typical way that or you Or like on Steely yeah. Unicorns where he's on one of our teams. Right. So we co-opt it, you know, with the team. And I think the first, maybe, I'm trying to remember if it was the first time we played Unstable Unicorns or not, where we all ended up playing with our cards down, even though oh. you don't really want to show everybody your cards. But we played with our cards out so that it was easier to explain why we were doing what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Plus, she, you know, little hands, they're still learning how to hold all those, those cards, and we need to get some good yeah. kid card holders but it made it a little bit easier for yeah, her and some of those games where we just 
cards are open instead of hidden. Yeah. So sometimes we do that. Um, it changes the strategy a little bit with sometimes. We did that family game night that one time. The other, she had her cards on the table, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Especially if there's... Uh, some of the words and stuff might be difficult to read. You know, we still let her ask us what mm-hmm. the words are or what, you know, to help her read them so that... And we try not to use that like, yeah. to our advantage that we can see her cards. It's a challenge for the parents, too. Like, oh, I don't want to just take her out right now. But we usually focus on each other anyway. Some of the things that we're doing like that is we're teaching them the strategy. Mm-hmm. So we don't just say this is what you need to do. And we don't just let them, you know, flail around during the game. But we like to tell them what we are doing and why we're doing it. Like, why I'm making this move. We did that with, uh, we were teaching her how to play Bunny Kingdom. Yep. And I would say, okay, these are my options, but this is what I'm going to do because this is going to do better for me, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be hard for him to get this territory because I'm going to take it and I'm going to discard this card so he can't have it. Mm -hmm. And, like, walk her through those steps. And then giving them the options, like letting them know, well, you could do this, or you could do this. Mm -hmm. This is probably what will happen if you go this way. This is what I might do after your turn if you do this. Mm -hmm. And just try to get them to think it through and have those options and then make a choice. Mm -hmm. Helps them learn the game as you play rather than just learning it on their own. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we say that, you know, when you when you lose, you can you learn by your losing, mm-hmm. but you don't want to just force them to lose the first time. No. <laughs> because then you're no fun. No. And then and sometimes it's a little bit of, is there anything else that you want to do? Or are you sure that's what you want to do? Just to kind of get them to think about it instead of just rushing to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Like with uh, Catan Jr., like trading for resources and things like that. You're going to block the dog since she's running back and forth, jingling. (laughs) So in Catan Jr., it's, you know, a more Mm kid-friendly-ish version of the the full game. Uh, And there's different trading that you can do for your resources, just like you can in the Mm -hmm. regular version. But sometimes we might have to remind them to, like, look at what you have. Is there Are there any other, you know, resources that you want to trade to be able to make a ship or to make a fortress or to make the parrot mm-hmm. and things like that? Because sometimes they're only focused on, like, one thing. Like yeah, he likes to get parrots. He likes to get the parrots because he knows that lets him move the ghost pirate. But he doesn't build <laughs> anything else. Then, you know. So we might have to nudge him a little bit like, hey, look how many goats and cutlasses you have. What else can you do? Mm-hmm. Or is there anything else you want to do on this turn before... Yeah, that's when co-op games are nice. Yes. So when it comes to types of games, we love doing cooperative games with the kids because it's much easier to coach them. We lose together. We lose together. And it's easier easier to coach through the turns Mm -hmm. because we're all kind of working together. This is why I'm doing this. And this is why you should do that. Yeah. And again, it's still not a like, you have to do this. It's... Well, if you do this, that'll help us. You give them a choice. You know, and kind of put it out there. And so this is perfect because uh, Whitney was asking for some game suggestions. So, like, so types of games, she mentioned that they play a lot of Peaceful Kingdom games. And we love those with the kids, too, mm-hmm. especially getting them started and when they're younger because a lot of them are cooperative. They're a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, they're not overly. Like, you're not overly, like, competitive in those games because you're really working together. But then there's other ones that you can kind of take it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, like, Catan Jr., it's not a cooperative, but it's kind of taking that next step. Ticket to Ride, uh, First Journey Ticket Ride, First Journey, Ticket Ride, New York. Um, I wanted a little bit because it has some reading in it, but not. It's not a ton, though. But the First Journey has pictures, so you can... Yes. They see the pictures instead. It matches the pictures to the locations you have to go to, so they don't actually have to know how to read to be able to play that. Mm-hmm. And then matching the colors, like, you know, they can do that without reading. So that's another good one, and it's a really good one. I think that's another one that we probably show our cards more than you typically yeah. would when you're playing, yeah. just because it's a little bit easier to kind of be like, don't forget, like, what you have there yeah. <laughs> and stuff to the kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Ticket to Ride New York is good because it's so short. Yeah, it's it's like 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. 
so it's a really quick one to play through and then it's easier to play multiple times yeah. <laughs> and then some different card games that we like to play are things like dragon wood so that has a little bit more strategy it has cards and dice zombie dice yeah <laughs> it's not cooperative but it's doesn't require any reading it's Stealing easy to cards. roll unstable unicorns we enjoy playing that yeah. that has more strategy involved but it does have some reading but it's a good way to get in reading practice so if you have a younger one who you know isn't necessarily wanting to sit down and do their reading <laughs> um it's kind of fun because then they have to practice reading what's on the cards and stuff like that and yep. they're not even thinking that they're practicing nope. reading time so that's another good one memoir was good memoir it's a memory type game it's not cooperative but it's not boring like yeah. normal memory <laughs> <Can be. laughs> it's a little bit more interesting mm -hmm. because you're trying you're trying to match things but you're remembering them because they stay laid out for like yeah, seven you have to rounds do patterns and stuff too yeah yeah and then you're essentially trying to escape before the volcano erupts so when the last person is left they get the treasure that round mm -hmm. but all the cards stay where they were so as you go, you start remembering more and more of them. So it's a little bit interesting. I know you're trying to look behind you. I mean, in terms of co-op games, I mean, the Forbidden ones. Were good. Forbidden I mean, a little Island? It can be more extreme, but really, kids are fine with it. Yeah, and I, I would definitely say if going that route, Forbidden Island before Forbidden Desert. Yeah, Forbidden Island's a little sim more simple. Because that Forbidden Desert gets a little bit... Just has a little bit more. Doesn't there a couple other layers on top? Onto it, but no pun intended. Forbidden Island is good. It's another cooperative one. You're working together to recover some treasure pieces. Mm -hmm. So you have to work together to keep the little pieces from the island from you know, sinking, flooding, and things like that. So you have to work together and talk through where you're going and who's doing what. And you have special roles too. Mm -hmm. Like some people can do like swim across and some people can clear more than one at the same mm -hmm. time and so you kind of have a special thing that you have to do yeah, it's, very, it's the same design as um, pandemics so it's very yes very and pandemic play. is actually a good one too with the kids mm -hmm. it it's might sound like it's a lot but it's a good way to kind of get in some geography because <laughs> you have you're talking about the different cities that are getting the infection cubes mm -hmm. um and there's nothing like scary with it because no, it's you just make funny names for diseases yeah like <laughs> you could just like one of them could be cooties or something yeah. like i mean you can be say whatever mm -hmm. and it's just the the colored cubes there's nothing that's like no scary looking in it but the other one is you have special roles and you're working together to clear them and if i mean if they like the marvel thanos is always a good one yes sounds a little more involved i think than pandemic but you can do it yeah. You could you could definitely modify the rules for kids. Oh, definitely. Thanos Rising, it's a lot of dice rolling, and you're, like, recruiting heroes. So if your kids love superheroes, that's a good one, and everyone's working together as a team. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a Plus good those one. those games get them used to losing. <laughs> it does. Well, that's the thing with cooperative games, is especially when you go beyond Peaceful Kingdom. Because, like, the Peaceful Kingdom ones, even though you can lose, I feel it's like it's... More, it's more rare, I feel. Like, it's pretty possible to win as a team hmm. some of the other ones that we play there's so many ways to lose but only yeah, one so way to win chance sometimes i mean we were playing a cooperative game earlier today we played it three times in a row yeah. and we lost mm -hmm. every single time <laughs> well, yeah, we won the first time just because we didn't have the time limit. well yeah true but that was a total practice round. yeah <laughs> so it kind of gets them used like it, they're not as bothered by it when they kind of get used to ever like we're all losing yeah, together yeah you know sometimes they still I mean, yeah they you just they get too. so into it mm -hmm. but it's it's a little bit easier than the whole but you won and i didn't especially between the siblings <laughs> they can usually handle it okay when it's us it's the mm -hmm. two of them when you don't want one of them winning and one of them not depending now they're yeah. much better with it but at first it was kind of rough sometimes yeah and then well i mentioned hive mind before too it's not as much coaching in that one no however it's a good one i think that your kids would really love it winnie uh it's easy for a big group to play yeah it can be like you can have like 12 three people to 12 people yeah. and really you could have more than that if you want they just only have 12 markers but you could add in more 
but it's it's easy to play with a large group and there's no wrong it's it's kind of like trivia but there's no wrong answers it's if you ever play categories it's like that but it's the opposite. Like that. instead of trying to get different you're trying, trying to be the, the same. same yeah so yeah you're you're answering questions but it's based off of your experiences and things that you know and you're trying to think what the people around you like. would answer and you want to have the same answers mm-hmm. so it's Especially when you're playing, when there's adults and kids, it's kind of interesting, like, trying to think, what would the kids be guessing Then you're always right totally now? wrong, because they didn't guess anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought you would have thought this one, but, yeah. it's. I mean, it is a good one just to get them kind of used to mm-hmm. just playing, too, yeah. if they haven't there's been so playing There's so many card options, question options that you're not We haven't seen out. all of the cards. <laughs> That's like the we biggest part We haven't seen all of them. Game. She said that she still has some who have meltdowns when they don't win. And every once in a while, we do, too. I mean, okay. to, today we did. It wasn't really a meltdown. It was more like a, I uh, can't do anything. Right. It was more like she got a little overwhelmed and had confused, yeah. confused about where she was supposed to be going. It, it was a real-time game, which is a little bit different than we usually mm-hmm. play. So There's some stress there. But <laughs> it wasn't even her fault. I, I, was, was I, I had not gotten out of the temple either. No. So, but she did. had gotten like, I thought I was supposed to go here. And I was like, it's okay. Relax. So we, we still have those moments, yeah. too. It's not as bad as it used to be, though, because... You don't want to play games for a while. Well, also, I mean... These were staples in my childhood. Candyland. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Trouble. Sorry, <laughs> they were staples in my childhood. Of course, we have them, but things don't always go so well with it. Especially sorry, like they think it's hilarious to bump my pawn. Yeah, we do any of those. But then I run into like I have no choice yeah. or whatever, and that's those games where we modified our playing to not win. But they there are totally times when I them. when I have quit in the middle of it because they are just having such a rough time with how it's like that's one that we don't really play like we had to stop playing it and go okay we need to just focus on cooperative games for a while because this competition part was just too intense Mm -hmm. and now we're kind of back to where we can have some competition in there especially when the game itself is a little bit more fun like with thanos rising for example i find it fun even if we lose Pandemic. It's fun even if we lose because it's like, oh my gosh, we were almost the last there. Time we almost we had, like, had one, that. We're like, or those ones you win, you win. We're like, you're like one turn from losing and you do it. And yeah, that's why as much as those are fun. So it's a little bit more. I don't know. Like it's just more interesting throughout the whole time. You're kind of on the edge. But yeah, if, you, if you if you coach them and teach them, then you end up creating a competition, a player for life that you play against. You know. Yes. And then, because those have a lot of replayability, so Mm -hmm. then it's a little bit easier to be like, okay, let's try this again, and let's make it a little harder this time, now that we've won a couple times or whatever. So those ones are nice because you can adjust the difficulty, because even though they give a suggestion, like, they tell you, like, the novice level to start it, with the kids, you could actually bring it down. Oh, yeah. Like, with Pandemic, we could have just one or two Epidemic cards in the deck, or something like that, Mm -hmm. so that... It's not causing as much chaos when there's multiple cards in there. And, and, there's, then, other, well, and there's other more advanced-ish games that we're thinking about modifying using our own rules, like role yeah. player. Like, how could we make this so that it could sort of get into right. it? Because it's a little bit it's got a lot going on, but you could definitely ease it down a little bit. And especially just because the time of it. Yeah, because we like really, hour. we really try to keep games with the kids under thirty minutes. There are a few games that are like 45, maybe up to an hour, but it's a little bit rare. Like they, we have to know really what kind of day they've been having. <laughs> like it needs to be like, let's play first thing in the morning before we've had anything else that's going to impact their behavior and stuff to have a much longer game. Mm-hmm. But like a 45 minute, there's some times where that's totally fine, but it depends on the game. Um, when it's a brand new game, they don't do well if they have to sit and listen to how to play, and then it plays for a long time. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier when we can show them how to play throughout, kind of like get going and you just show them how to play and just kind of dive in, and keeping it shorter. Yeah. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add. I think we did. Most <laughs> No, Lots. it's definitely not just you, Whitney. It's no, no. not just you. That's what we're talking tonight, because we know it's not just you. And yeah. when we start playing games, we're, 
I mean, we were just coaching but by default. Kind of fell into it, but you don't think about it. You're like, oh, let the kids win. It's what it always says, you know. Yeah, because there's been times where I've kind of, like, held back or pulled back, especially if it's a brand new game, which, I mean, I... I do that with my adult friends too like i kind of you know because i want to help make sure that they understand how to play before i destroy them (laughs) i'm gonna tell them like don't don't feel bad about destroying us right like don't feel bad about if you have to attack my character just do it Mm -hmm. if you have you know whatever but i like trying to make sure that people understand what they're doing and why they're making the choices they are and then it just makes it more fun the more times that we play together because you don't want them to come in and be like, boom, gotcha. <laughs> right, like, well, because that's it's, not, it's, not, it's not fun. <laughs> like, if, the dog saw a cat, so if you heard her like scrambling <laughs> over there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yeah, those are the things that we like to look at with helping to teach them strategy. And we can definitely tell that they, they're picking up on it. Yep. I mean, when if you haven't been kind of coaching them through... At first, it's going to feel really weird, Mm -hmm. and they might be a little resistant to it because sometimes they're like, I know, (laughs) I know, stop. Like, but eventually they start. Look, it worked. What you told me worked. They'll start picking up on it, or they'll be like, what, unicorn what, is a good one because now I it's like what I'm worried I about her now because she'll take me out. Right. And now she she gets so happy <laughs> when she's doing well on her own without mm-hmm. any help. And I mean makes more fun games. You feel good when you like accomplish it on your own, you know? It's not super Teach a man to fish, as they say, right? Right. I mean, what fun is it winning candy land Yay. by default? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But sometimes holding back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Shoots and t- ladders, another one of those, are just like you can't really force a win. It just right. It's like I spun that. I what am I supposed oh, okay, to do? Okay, land on this big long slide. I guess. <laughs> you know? It's true. No one wants to play against bad players, so we're trying to raise yes. good, positive players. It's true. Because we want them to be kind of the people that we want to game with for life. They're our kids. You know, mm-hmm. we always want to be able to game with them, and then yeah, we're creating yeah. our own. Co op people. Yeah, yeah, our own little team, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which makes it nice when we do have game nights with other people because. They're so good at it, and they're like, oh, kids are know, pretty good like, at this. <laughs> And then they help teach their kids, and then we help teach them, and like, we just, it's all like, mm-hmm. it's a really good time because we're all like working together and learning new stuff, and no one's like having terrible meltdowns every two mm-hmm. seconds. <laughs> so we're always looking for new games that are maybe more advanced, yet they have an easier way to modify or coach like oh yeah. we can coach them through this. like bunny kingdom is 14 plus which it says mm-hmm. um which she coached her fine that she's seven yeah. yeah i mean i know we could have done more damage but she did great our first time i think she won i'm trying to remember the first way that we did i think we sort of worked as a team oh but the first time we played with them yes we had two teams mm-hmm. but then she played solo with us yes she and then we well. coached her through mm-hmm. and so then... yeah i mean you can play much more advanced games if you coach them right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't just dive into like a huge, heavy, hardcore game. They're not going to, you know, Gloomhaven this turn like that. <laughs> going to work up to it a little bit, but it's really, it's really nice knowing that we don't necessarily have to buy a kid version. Though, I mean, we buy kid versions of games. We buy games that are aimed towards kids. We have a, it's a good, you know, game. We like to have a mix, mm-hmm. but it's nice knowing that you know. You buy a tan. We can put normal pandemic version. on the table and play it with them. Yeah. And that we can work together as a team. I mean, it teaches teamwork, and there's just so many like positive benefits at coaching them through. That it just, I feel like it's better than just letting them win so that they, yeah, don't feel bad that they lost. Mm-hmm. Then you don't have any fun. <laughs> you don't want to play games anymore. Yeah. Because then they're like gloating to everybody that they beat you at Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, Kimmy, teamwork is really important to teach and. That's why we love cooperative games so much because yeah. it really does teach they that. Come up with some good ones recently, you know. Yeah. So when I was a kid, I never any cooperative games. I don't either. <laughs> I. I feel like not not saying pandemic is the first one, but I think that's the first one, like main like, like really mainstream one that was like oh, you're the team and you're building the game. Yeah. I mean, video games for a while have been like that, but there were never any board games. Till. No, and I mean. No, they're kind of all the rage. 
Because, like I mentioned before, I mean, I had a lot of the classics. I mean, I've played video games and board games since I was, like, four or five. Mm-hmm. Like, pretty early on. But, I mean, I pretty much remember Connect Four, Hi-Ho Cherio, Candyland. Trouble. Trouble. Shoots and I ladders. played chess. Shoots, chess. Shoots and ladders. War. <laughs> War. Oh, no. Triple E. Um, Boggle. You know, like, a lot of, like, words. Scrabble. Like, oh, um, word kind of cribbage. Okay. <laughs> well, euchre, sheep's head. You know. <laughs> but I don't really remember. Yeah, I don't really remember cooperative games. You're in team based, really, unless you're just kind of being no, on the same team. Not really, yeah. except for like win, lose, or draw, like or like Pictionary. Yeah. It's probably about the extent of a team based one. Nothing fun. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I never did super well with those. But yeah, not a whole lot of like really. We're working together. Sounds to do a good this. time, you know, for kids to play that kind of stuff. That's why I wish I would have actually gotten into D and D like early. Yeah, I didn't have anybody that played that far that I was aware of. That's probably about the only like cooperative. Yeah, so you're on. Yeah, you get, you get to the DM because you're sort of questing know. together. Mm-hmm. You know, but in terms of like, I mean, when we were kids, mainstream that wasn't mainstream. No. In the eighties. No, it's not, <laughs> not mainstream <laughs> games. If you have any other questions, definitely let us know. Or and tips that you've done, yeah, that you yes. use in your games. Or, or any games. <laughs> I was going to say, any other game suggestions. We're always we, looking for more. We're jamming in your summer. We, we love game suggestions. We probably acquire more games than we really need to, but there's no such thing as too many games. No. <laughs> um, but we also had some comments asking for some su- suggestions for games for elementary school age. So if you have any other ones to add in, Please share because as, there was something about that. as many games as I list, I don't know everything. You yeah, know? Engage Family Gaming had a post about elementary or preschool, something like that. Sure. Oh yeah, I'm there. I'm I'm almost positive Engage Family Gaming has a post, so we can drop that link in later. Or Stephen, if you are still on, you can drop the link too. <laughs> I remember reading one. I just forget exactly what it was. I think it might have been. I remember seeing preschool for sure, but they probably have an elementary school age one, and. Yeah, I love when other people have lists because they're not always the same as what we put together mm-hmm. because it depends on what you've played and yeah. what you've had experience with. So it's great to get suggestions from multiple people. So thanks so much for thanks watching. So much. Yeah.